Well, first of all, thank you for taking a mm -hmm. second to come up here and uh, talk to me. So I wanted to do this because I had a chance to read up on you, listen to some mm -hmm. other interviews you did, and uh, you have an amazing journey. And you have yes. this awesome platform. And I feel like with some of these experiences, these le the, the lesser known fighters don't necessarily get the fan base behind them because the fans don't know anything about them. So mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of give an opportunity for you to tell your story, yeah. you know, tell your journey. So thank you for mm -hmm. coming on up here. That's amazing. Motherhood came very natural to me, as it does for, for most of us moms, but I feel like it was, uh, for me, it was like something that was meant to be. So it, yeah. it just, it was very smooth transition. Although I had like my fears and like yeah. of the unknown and you know, like that, just wondering like, how can I do this? But I, yeah, like I said, it was smooth, but at the same time it felt like it was like a new beginning. Just like that's when my life really started was when I had her. Yeah. So, so talk a little bit about um, why we're here. And part of why we're here is that you know, I like I said when I when I listened to your story, I thought immediately, okay, this story like it needs to be told for a number of reasons. It needs to be told because people need to know who you are as a person. I think to, in order to really appreciate what you do mm -hmm. in the octagon, you know, it's sort of like its own art form in a weird way. Yes. Um, but then also, there are a lot of other women who have been in a similar situation mm -hmm. who I think could really draw strength and inspiration from some for some from someone like yourself so just briefly kind of explain you know your your journey with domestic violence and where that has brought you today mm -hmm. so yeah I was um, in a situation um, for many years but just didn't really want to accept it for what it was that it was a, an abusive relationship and it just came to a point where um, I realized that it's, this is not how love is supposed to be. This is not the way I want an environment that I want to raise my daughter in. And, um, you know, there was an incident that happened and it just sort of, a switch went off that's and it was, point. yeah, and there was a time where I'm like, yeah, like I said, it was just like a switch. Any other time I would have stayed and tried to, a lot of my uh, reasoning for staying that long was, you know, stay together for, you know, keep the family together, like, um, doing this, you know, keeping it together for my daughter. Um, but I realized that was just more damaging to her and I, just, you know, making excuses and um, just, I don't know. But like I said, when, you know, some the incident happened and it just a switch went off and I realized this is not the way it's supposed to be. And I just was like, I'm, I'm not going to live like this anymore. And so um, there was a period of time where we were dealing with, um, you know, court issues and, and like, custody issues um you know wasn't just like a cut and dry I'm out of here it was you know when dealing with someone it's like that it's very very complicated yeah. um and it always gets worse before it gets better and yeah. in my case it, it did it got really really bad and um to the point where um when it was time to come back to Philly because when it happened my my daughter and I had gone to Cincinnati to be closer to family. Mm -hmm. And during that time, um, my belongings were pretty much given away. They were thrown away. Um, so basically when I came back to Philly, I had nothing. Um, and uh, nor did I have a place to live. So there were a lot of calls made. Because um, over the years I was you know, isolated quite a bit. So I didn't really have anyone I could reach out to. So that was kind of an uncomfortable thing for me were you know to start making calls to these people that yeah. I hadn't spoken to in a while and on top of that you know hey this is what happened and so you to, make it you make it into um, the shelter how what was what was her reaction to all this like was she kind of I mean kids are so resilient but was she aware of the situation or not she was aware yeah like okay obviously this things is are very different different, yeah. different like who are these people yeah um, however, she has such a good attitude about everything and she's so resilient and I drew like a lot of my strength from her and, um, told Jim. <laughs> okay. Um, she's really just an amazing, an amazing kid and, um, 
But yeah, we just, I found that just staying as positive as I could and to answer any questions that she had as honestly as I could without giving too many like of the like scary information. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just like, oh, this is, you know, she asked, you know, and I said, listen, this is our new apartment for now. And um, these are like our neighbors. And I sort of just like kept it at that. And mm -hmm. she, um, she found like she was happy there. There were other kids there she could play with. She was making friends. Um, but on while we were there, I was trying to keep our normal schedule, like the things that we would do. We would still go to the bookstore. We'd still go to the parks, the playgrounds. Um, you know, she loves going to the museums and, and things. And so I, I kept all that as normal and as, as regular. Consistent, yes, yeah. consistent. Thank you. As, yeah. as I could. And um, that helped a lot. So um, but like I said, she was very just kind of accepted it. And we talk more about it now. I'm like, especially like me giving back to the safe haven. Yeah. Um, she comes with me um, sometimes to help with the kids. And so um, she understands more now of like what it was and why we were there. But I still try to stay away from giving her too many details. Um, you know, I, I never really say, you know, this is what happened to me and this is why yeah. we're here. But she, she gets it. Yeah. So. So those first, how long were you there? Uh, we were there for four months. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. So those first few weeks, what like, again, kind of like describe the feeling. Mm -hmm. What's what what's going through your mind and through your heart, I guess, mm -hmm. in the situation of, yeah. of, of figuring out a path forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really, really hard. It's, I think, so I'll say when we first got there, when I first like stepped foot in, um, there was a very nice lady um, she, who did intake, and um, I remember walking in. She was like, Jamie, Jamie are you doing? I was like, yeah. and I just like totally broke down. And I'm like, man, like I'm here. Like this is our life, like right now. And I'm like, I can't. We can't stay here. You know, like it's what the safe haven does is amazing and it's um, an amazing way to help women transition from from there to you know getting housing getting back on their feet and um, I just refused to like I accepted it but I'm like man I, I have to get us out of this like as soon as I possibly can and never co never come back yeah. Um, but yeah just the first um, couple weeks were really hard I, f I felt just that feeling of hope, hopelessness. You know, I felt hopeless and it was hard to get out of bed some days, but then I just think of my daughter. I think about, um, you know, if you don't get out of bed, it's gonna be, you know, then you're here longer. You know, yeah. this you're gonna lose out on another day that you could be getting more contacts and resources and um, just finding ways to, you know, push forward and, and move toward like, uh, you know, a better day, a better, you know, just moving forward was really all it was about for me. And so, it was, is, sorry, I didn't no, mind. it's okay. Is she, would you say that she's sort of the driving force in like a lot of the trajectory of your life, even, even now, like even in this oh. moment, in these fights? And, and like, everything, yeah. everything I do, it's, it's for her. Yeah. And it's, she's the reason why I wake up, why she's the reason why I work hard. She's, um, she's the reason why I love so hard, you know, she's, you know, she's my baby. Yeah. I love her. She's my best friend. She's, I mean, she told me before I left, she said, Mommy, even if you lose, I'm still so proud of you. So it's stuff like that is what's like, you know, yeah. I'm not going to lose and, you know, it's going <laughs> to be, I'll be good. But it's just, you know, the fact that that's even in her thought process is like, man, like I have, I have to win for her. Yeah. I have to do that for her.